Following in the footsteps of the great explorers Peter Byrne and Tom Slick, we ventured into Nepal looking for the abominable snowman, or the Yeti as the locals call it. After splitting up, Rene and I spoke with a witness who described the Yeti eating frogs. Information like this leads us to believe the Yeti is much more like the North American Sasquatch than we thought. Meanwhile, Bubble went camping with a Sherpa guy named Lapka, who knows the area and says this spot is rife with Yeti activity. And sure enough, after Lapka's Yeti call, they heard something respond. What do you think that was? Maybe Yeti. Maybe Yeti? Yeah. What did you hear that sound? But what did it sound like? It sounded like a ooh. Yeah, far away. Yeah. And there's nobody lives down there. No, no. Sherpa Village is directly behind us to the right. What we heard was down the mountain down that the way. Mountain. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we heard something clear as day. That sound was not from a human and not from a known animal. It has to be a Yeti. We stayed out for a few more hours using the therm, doing calls. But as Squatch and Luck would have it, we got rained out. So John Hunt, the leader of the Everest expedition, he was with the group. And they heard this howling noise in the night. And the Sherpa said, that's a Yeti. Other people said the same thing, some kind of scream, single scream. Shanta and I are on our way to visit with Anja Ring. He's the older gentleman that Pasan Namgil Lama recommended that we go speak to because apparently this guy heard the same kind of vocalization as Pasan Namgil Lama did around the same time. If he can confirm that this is what a Yeti sounds like, then we can use that on the next night investigation. So, Baba, Pasan Lama is Sometimes uh, once in a week and sometimes twice in a week. Oh, so um, this would happen often. Would it be very, very loud, like it was right outside the house, or would it sound like it was really far off in the mountains? Two times. Why don't I play the recording of Pasam Namgil Lama? Oh, there you go. Yeah. I did not need a translator to know that that was exactly the noise that he had heard 30 something years ago. Uh, so what we have here is a, a one kind of creature mm -hmm. making the same noises at different locations. Mm -hmm. Does he think that was a Yeti? Wow. It's so interesting to find another witness who heard the exact same noises. Because, you know, uh, bears in California sound the same as bears in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that yetis in one part of the country are going to sound the same as yetis in another. And here we have another person who's obviously very familiar mm -hmm. with the animals that live here. And it's the exact same noise that Pasam Namgil Lama shared with us. That is so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK. Pasam Namgil Lama saw the creature make those vocalizations. Okay. Amja Ring only heard it, but it was the same noise. It's unquestionable. Clearly, the Yetis at that time and place were using these noises to vocalize and communicate with one another. Even though we got rained out last night, I know this area near Caracola has definite Yeti activity. I'm not sure what lock was on the therm, but I can tell you this, neither one of us had ever heard that call before from any known animal. OK, Luca, you said the Yeti lives around this lake? Yeah. I say we go, now that there's a break in the rain, and we go look for tracks, footprints. Oh, OK. All right? Yeah. OK, so we'll go look the scout. Oh. I'm really hoping the weather cooperates today, because we do find some tracks, 
It'll only be a matter of time before they start to decay in the rain. All these leaves make it hard to see. Yeah. Cow, cow, cow. It's all cows. We found two sets of footprints, uh, not like a Sherpa foot, not very long, uh, eight or 10 inches, but very, very wide with a huge toe. So we recognize them as something different. This one is the Eti. You think that might be Yeti? Yeti, yeah. Yeah, you can see the toes. Toes dug in here. Yeah. Hind foot. Put that around it. I'm gonna put a scale item down there. Plug at the tape measure. But we keep looking for more tracks. Even though it's washed out from the rain and it appears most likely to be a bear, I'm not so sure because the Yeti tracks are a little different than Sasquatch tracks. They don't have a big toe sticking far up like a Squatch does. And on the way back to base, I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for more tracks. All three of us are gonna go check out Nuri Sherpa. He was the guy who was carrying a basket of potatoes, and he said a Yeti was walking the other way toward him. Namaste. 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 Hopefully, we can learn some things from this incident that will help us figure out where we should go here. So we have Nuri Sherpa. Namaste, Nuri Sherpa. Uh -huh. And this is where it happened? Yes, yes. OK. It was in the wintertime, right before sunset. I was walking the trail home by myself, carrying vegetables from my farm. I came to a bend and saw the Yeti only 15 feet from where I was standing. And he got so scared and he left the potatoes and he ran away. At the same time, the creature also ran away opposite direction. Could you have him describe what the creature looked like, please? Dark gray. I know some of the other villagers have seen bears in these hills. We just want to make sure, at that distance, is there any chance that it could have been a bear or even a person? I'm continually impressed with these stories. These people are so isolated. There's no phone, no television, no internet. I seriously doubt they're lying. It's not like they're gonna get famous or something. But let's take a look at this a little bit more closely. We have to eliminate the possibility that he saw a bear. Okay, so how tall was this thing? Tell me when to stop my hand. Yeah, that much. Right there. That's barely over six feet. Now, how wide was it? Tell me when to stop my hands for the shoulders, okay? Did he? Uh, more, yeah, more, more. Yes, that much. OK, that much. OK, yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty wide. That's another six inches on me. Now, as far as color goes, is it uh, darker than my hair? <laughs> no offense, Cliff, but the hair was more black. <laughs> is it like the color that Renee dyes her hair? <laughs> <laughs> uh.